Hi everyone. Welcome to Deakin's uh, virtual open day and welcome to the optometry presentation. I'm James Armitage, I'm the uh, optometry course director and it's a real pleasure to welcome you at least virtually um, to our campus. I look forward to talking you through our optometry program over the next half an hour or so and um, we will be available for a live chat afterwards so if you have any questions um, please hang on the line and um, make sure you come and chat to some of the staff during our uh, Q&A session. I begin by um, acknowledging country. We live and work in uh, Wathaurong country uh, and the university is dispersed um, over a number of uh, countries. So I wanna show my respect and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we teach and learn, uh, all the Deakin campuses, um, the Gunjumara people, the Wathaurong and the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations the Gunn and William Bullock people. Uh, I pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging, and I thank them for allowing us to learn on their land. So you're here at the optometry session, and, and I guess what I'd really like to do is um, talk through why I chose optometry and perhaps why some of our students choose optometry. Um, talk to you a bit about what we do as health practitioners, and then about the Deakin course, what makes us unique and the, the uh, nuts and bolts of the course and the entry requirements. So whenever we think about um, a career and, and perhaps you've always wanted to be a health professional, perhaps you've always wanted to be an optometrist, but maybe you're thinking about a number of um, different options for you. And when I thought about a career, I wanted something that would allow me good employment prospects um, money is not important for a, a lot of people and it's not important particularly for me, but it's also, you know, reality of life, we need money. Um, so good financial rewards is important as well. And a flexibility in working hours uh, that can work with life balance, with friends, with family. Um, optometrists can work either in solo practices and be their own bosses or can work in larger teams. Certainly anyone who chooses a health professional a uh, health profession, I hope, is, is looking for the privilege of helping others and taking care of others. Um, under normal circumstances, there's opportunities for travel um, and to work in very disparate and, and very different um, areas of optometry around the country um, and even internationally. Um, but also, um, there's a combination in optometry of health focused uh, and business roles. So it gives you, in many ways, the best uh, of both worlds. And so optometry um, has very good employment prospects. It's around 100%, 95.4 points something was our, our last uh, graduate survey results just a couple of months after, um, after finishing up. And, and good remuneration to start off with. Um, generally, there are flexible working hours. And as I said, some people choose to work in small practices and start their own practices. Um, others really like to work in big teams and don't want the the role of being the boss, but they're really happy working in a team and providing care. Optometry is certainly, and eye care is certainly something that all of Australians need, particularly Australians in rural and regional areas. Um, and there is the privilege of helping a lot of people. And it is, can be a very challenging discipline. Um, and it's a discipline that can give great rewards. I've worked in uh, three, four states uh, now over my career as a, as a locum optometrist. And there are certainly uh, opportunities to travel to country, to different cities, uh, different states. And there's um, a Trans-Tasman Agreement which allows you to work in New Zealand uh, very easily um, as an optometrist. And optometry does mix um, very nicely the, the healthcare roles as well as the business roles. Optometrists, as you probably know, um, are responsible as the primary eye health um, practitioners. So we assess the function of the eyes and the visual system as a whole. We monitor eye health. And where we need to, we prescribe glasses or contact lenses um, that will correct visual function. We, we also work to prescribe visual therapies and um, exercises that will improve ex uh, visual function. Um, where there are certain diseases that need managing, optometrists prescribe pharmacological agents. And we work in large multidisciplinary uh, teams as well with GPs, ophthalmologists, orthoptists, um, as well as other optometrists. I think what makes the Deakin program unique 
is, uh, is these people here. This is um, one of our first graduating cohorts. In fact, um, it's, we, we set this course up really um, with a mission for all of our, the staff is to, to make the optometry program that we wish we had when we were um, training. So we've tried to understand um, what caused us the most amount of stress and anxiety when we were trying to learn it and focus on those areas. We've tried to find the things that gave us the most enjoyment and maximize those things. So we're very student focused and we're very keen uh, to turn out the best practitioners that we can. But really it's you guys, our students who make us unique. We were Australia's first accelerated optometry course. Um, when we first commenced this course in 2012, we were the only accelerated optometry course. All other courses um, either required a bachelor degree and four years of study or a five year combined bachelor master's degree. Because of Deakin's trimester system um, and the fact that we use all of those trimesters, you will complete your degree over a three and a half year period. So you'll finish a five year degree in a three and a half year period. So you learn the same as you would uh, in another program, but rather than spending November to March uh, on the couch or at the beach, um, you get to, uh, you get the enjoyment of coming to university over two summers uh, and you finish your degree a year and a half early. Um, depending on, again, depending on your family circumstances, perhaps your retraining as an optometrist, perhaps your um, looking to get out into the workforce um, to, to get some financial stability. The extra one and a half hours may, uh, years makes a big difference there. Um, there are a number of other programs that have now taken on this role, um, but we certainly were the first uh, to uh, pioneer it. We're also the first and still um, there are some um, two programs now in the world, one in the UK uh, and another one soon developing in Australia who have taken on our um, curriculum and there, um, but we were the first to use problem-based learning as our primary delivery method uh, of teaching you how to be a healthcare practitioner. Problem-based learning has been used in medicine for about 30 years and is now very much the standard uh, within the medical programs because it allows you to learn in context, it allows you to learn uh, rather than learning all the ologies you know, pathology, histology, pharmacology separately and then try and put them together, we actually train uh, a rounded individual um, and so we train you in all of these disciplines at the same time and put it into context so you understand what the patient will need um, from you as you start to deliver their healthcare. You need to understand the medico-legal aspects, you need to understand the communication aspects of, of how to, to work with them in a shared care environment and you need to understand the anatomy, the physiology, and um, all the treatment options for them. So you learn all aspects of optometry by studying real live case presentations and working in teams um, to develop this knowledge. We have a real focus on providing um, you with all the tools to produce a work ready graduate. So our educational philosophy, the preclinical, the clinical and dispensing optics training are all focused on making you work ready both inside the consulting room, but also in that business sense to understand what the rest of the practice are doing, what their needs and what their um, requirements are. And also understanding what our colleagues in other professions might be um, needing us to do to work and provide them and our patients with the best care. Because we use a trimester system, you'll get into the work base, uh, workforce a year and a half faster as well. And we have a real uh, strong focus on both short term and longer term placements. Um, so from first year, you will start spending time uh, looking at optometry practices, learning about the business of optometry. In second year, you start observing optometry practices and then uh, preclinical training. And in third year, this is extensive. In fourth year, you'll be spending six months out in a clinical placement in one or two practices in regional, rural or remote Australia and or a metro area. So six months you'll spend as a resident um, in one of our clinical optometric and or um, medical settings. To get into the program, uh, we've made a deliberately um, low prerequisite. Um, so we believe that good students will always be able to apply themselves and learn so you don't need an extensive list of prerequisites we will teach you what you need to learn 
At the moment, the indicative ATAR is around the 96 mark, though for rural and regional students, um, there is definitely uh, the opportunity for you to um, at attend our course as well. School leavers will need uh, VCE three and four, so a study score of at least 30 is English in, in English, if you're doing it English as another language, or 25 in, in English. Other than that, um, all other prereq there are no other prerequisites, we will teach you what you need to learn. For non-school leavers, um, we're very interested in hearing people from people who've got previous tertiary, vet, life or work experience. Um, and you'll, your entry will be based on your ATAR. Um, and we will also um, take into account any Cert 4 diplomas or degrees or partial degrees um, that you may have done. And any other evidence that you want to give us providing uh, academic capability will be judged. So this is a ranging criterion and we use a number of, uh, of, of different aspects of your career to help us uh, understand where um, and how well you'll fit into the program. We know that the, the dispersion of optometrists and indeed all healthcare practitioners um, into rural and regional and remote Australia is, is not as good as it could be. And we know that health outcomes um, in the regions are not as good as those in the metro areas. Um, we are really set out to address regional remote uh, workforce shortages. And as such, we're following um, research by the World Health Organization and others that show that by recruiting people from the country, rural and remote areas, training them in rural and remote areas, um, there's a greater chance that we will train practitioners who then want to go out and meet that workforce shortage. So there's certainly a very high employment optometry for optometrists, uh, employment opt uh, opportunities for optometrists outside metro areas. Um, and Deakin offers this regional remote entry stream as an alternative entry into our um, Bachelor of Vision Science Master Optometry course. So if you are from a rural school, um, please come and talk to us via the question and answer stream uh, and we'll be able to talk to you about that after this uh, presentation. So in order to um, enter via the rural and entry stream, um, rural and remote entry stream, um, there's a separate VTAC code. So we suggest that you preference the standard course uh, first, followed by the um, rural and remote stream. So we can um, give as many people the opportunity of getting into the, the course. So current year 12 students, you need to be undertaking your final year of schooling at a regional or remote secondary school, um, which is defined by these ABS categories and it's not in a major city in Australia. We're based in Geelong and we're a Geelong University and this is a Geelong based course. So current year 12 students from the city of Greater Geelong are also allowed to um, apply through this stream. There's a range of criteria, but eligible applicants will receive an adjustment of up to 10 aggregate points um, towards their entry score within this um, entry stream. So you can see the web page down there, deacon.edu.au forward slash health forward slash regional and remote entry scheme, um, and you can get further details. We're also very keen on addressing and redressing uh, the health balance uh, issues that our Indigenous uh, brothers and sisters um, experience and Indigenous eye health is one of those areas. So as such, we are also um, very proud to have an Indigenous entry stream to our, our course. So if you have a secondary school equivalent, so uh, a VCE and or uh, a ATAR of greater than 50 um, and have and or completed uh, a year of study at Cert 4 with a grade point of five and above and have the evidence of academic capability, um, which is judged to be equivalent, including an approved foundation uh, program or relevant work or life experience, particularly as a healthcare practitioner. Um, we're very interested in talking to you to see whether you'll be suitable uh, to enter via this stream. Uh, the Indigenous Entry Stream closes a little earlier than the VTAC and uh, Direct Entry Stream. So that's 11.59pm um, on the 30th of September 2020. And we really do encourage you to get in touch with us if uh, you think that this stream may be appropriate for you. 
So you need to be uh, recognised as an Indigenous Australian and provide that confirmation. And please go to deacon.edu.au forward slash course forward slash D302 to see the inherent requirements of the course. Again, we would really like to talk to anyone from a rural background or an Indigenous background who may be interested in doing the course so that we can see if this is uh, the right course for you um, and uh, see how we can support you through the course. So once you're in, it's a four year, um, three trimester per year program or three and a half year, three trimester per year program. In year one, uh, there's a lot of foundational studies. So we teach you about the Australian health system, understanding health and biostatistics. We start teaching optics and uh, we start the optometry specialization in uh, the first trimester of, of first year. Uh, we teach you cell biology and then move into the science of vision, which teaches evidence-based practice, reflective practice in a vision science context. A little bit more optics, ocular anatomy, chemistry. And finally, in the third trimester, we move into more science of vision, which is again, more evidence-based practice and understanding how to take care of our patients. The business of optometry, ocular physiology or ocular function, and a little bit of basic accounting so that you can understand how business works. Once you've been through those fundamentals, we move into a problem-based learning and team-based learning environment. Um, this is a, a, as I said, it's, a, it's been used in medicine for perhaps up to 30 years now. And what, by using problem-based learning, um, we get to teach you all the things that you need to think about when you're taking care of a patient with um, particular presentations. And we match both the learning of uh, the technical information, the, the vision science information, with the acquiring of clinical skills. So you'll see there there's health and vision science units and principles and practice of optometry units. They're really um, a very integrated, horizontally and vertically integrated curriculum. And the idea is that as you're learning about a condition, you learn about its epidemiology, how to treat it, and also the clinical skills that you need to make those decisions. That continues through all of year two and into year three, which is where you've moved into the, the master's program. And that problem-based learning um, peters out towards the end with lots of um, clinical placements before you go into a final six months of really dedicated clinical practice where you're out in an optometry practice in rural and re regional or remote Australia uh, also in a metro placement if you wish to do metro as well and um, where you get to use all the skills that you've learned in the preceding three years and apply them to to your patients and at the end of three and a half years um, you'll uh, you'll graduate as an optometrist able to apply for registration as an optometrist with APRA um, in Australia and New Zealand we're very proud of our facilities we built this, uh, we, we moved into a building um, when we first started this course and we, we built our building and our facilities um, to, to really maximise the chance of you learning in a most, uh, you know, authentic uh, way and, and in, in, in a way that really allows you to use skills as soon as you develop them. So we have a clinic on site um, where you will see patients first, your colleagues, uh, and then uh, patients from the community who come into our optometry clinic. Um, and you'll learn all facets of eye care delivery. And that's including uh, regular health checkups, as well as some of the more um, niche and specialized aspects of optometry, such as dry eye treatment, uh, experienced uh, advanced contact lens fitting, uh, and other things that are really unique to optometry. So I guess it's easy for us to say that we think we have a good um, course, but we, we really do care what our graduates think. Um, and we, we take a lot of time to listen to our graduates and change the course as much as we can to improve it constantly. Um, Jack Kirkman was, was one of our first graduates and she felt that clinical placement was um, one of the strongest parts because it was fantastic for her clinical and professional development. Jack also acknowledged that coming from a low socioeconomic background, the fact that she could be um, an optometrist within three and a half years rather than five years or seven years 
meant that she could put in the study time early and then uh, begin that financial independence uh, a lot quicker than if she were doing a traditional degree. Uh, Brooke is another one of our students and she really liked the fact that there was a combination of teaching methods, the problem-based learning, team-based learning that worked well together. And the clinical placement was with a way to, to transition from that university study uh, into work life. Brooke also felt the trimester system worked for her because um, she initially came down from Queensland, but um, she was, was really happy to be again working over the summer period and rather than having four months off each year, that she was able to finish her degree a lot quicker. So you will have um, great opportunities as a uh, Deakin Optometry graduate. Optometry is still very, very much um, uh, a needed profession um, and particularly in growing metro areas and also in regional areas. So you can apply for registration uh, as an optometrist with the Optometry Board of Australia uh, and um, our course is fully accredited by the Optometry Council of Australia and New Zealand. Um, and once you're um, registered, you can work as an optometrist, as a Medicare um, service provider um, in Australia, and also to pursue opportunities um, in New Zealand as well via the Trans-Tasman Agreement. So nearly all of our graduates are uh, in work. Often their work is um, almost sorted in the last two or three months of their placement, um, but 96.6% of, uh, of our graduates were employed very soon after graduating. Um, and my understanding is the ones who, who there were two or three students who hadn't um, started work yet because they'd been uh, traveling actually in that, in that year. So optometry graduates are really well placed for employment in a diverse range of settings. Yes, there's the traditional optometry clinics, um, which may be corporate community settings or within health services. Uh, optometrists are working in hospitals, in NGOs and private practices. And optometry research is very strong throughout Australia. Uh, career opportunities include traditional practice ownership, working in either a private or public clinic, um, but there's also a number of um, optometry schools. So there's uh, plenty of opportunity for those who might be thinking about moving into research and education um, to train as an optometrist, work an optometrist, and then uh, join the, the academic profession. And there are recognised um, areas of um, interest within of optometry which include myopia control, dry eye management, low vision, pediatric vision, contact lens vision. Um, and these are things that optometrists do um, all the time. Um, and for those of us who really enjoy some of that um, more focused clinical activity, it's, it's a, a great challenge. So I'll leave you now. Um, if you've got any questions, please do join us on the live question and answer. Um, session afterwards. I understand some of you might have some other talks to go to that are running uh, now and so there will be people um, at our virtual booth throughout the day that you can also answer questions, ask questions and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them uh, on the spot. So again thanks for coming to the Deakin Virtual Open Day. Um, look forward to hopefully seeing many of you um, in person perhaps uh, in 2021, once um, we've all moved through the, the COVID-19 uh, adventure that we've all been having. Uh, please take care, stay safe, and thanks a lot for uh, your interest in optometry at Deakin.